Hey everyone, and welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen, and this is episode 178. If you are a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back. And if you are a new viewer, thanks so much for checking out my podcast. Um, this is a podcast about knitting, spinning, and hand dyeing yarn in Brooklyn, New York, where I live. And yeah, I always forget to mention this at the beginning of every episode, but I am also known as Volan Vine on Ravelry, and we have a Yarngasm Ravelry thread, so if you haven't joined, please do. Uh, it's a lively group, uh, lots of discussion, lots of knit-alongs, and fun happening, so yeah, go on, um, feel free to join in, and my cat is totally making noise. She was out of the room, and she was making noise, and now she's in the room, now she wants to go out. You know how it goes. Um... Hopefully she'll just settle down and chill out a little bit. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, as I mentioned last week, uh, I, re I recorded the first episode of the new year, 2016. So I hope everyone's New Year's New Year's blah, blah, blah. I hope everyone's New Year is off to a great start. Um, and yeah, I guess what did I want to talk about? I have all these show notes, and there's something I wanted to talk about. Um, Okay, so you might have noticed, hopefully I found a song, but there is a new theme song. I thought it was time for a little refresher. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that and the like. So I am just going to go right into what is off my needles. Um, clearly, hang on, tea, tea time. Uh, in my hurdy mug, I have uh, Celestial Seasonings Gingerbread. I think it's just called gingerbread. I forgot the box downstairs, but that's what I believe it's called, and it's absolutely delicious. Just a little bit of Splenda, water, and that's it. Put the tea bag in, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> so, okay, what's off my needles? I am wearing my stone cutter pullover by Michelle Wong. The pattern is my, by Michelle Wong. She designed it for Brooklyn Tweed. I forget which version of Wool People, but I believe it's fall 2014. I could be totally wrong, but anyway. Um, when I was at Gage Intention, I saw her version hanging on the wall and I was like, I have to have that sweater. So I decided to uh, cast one on for myself using Quince & Co's uh, Lark Base, which is a four ply worsted, 100% uh, wool in their Damson colorway. And I co-hosted a knit along with uh, Lara, uh, Lara from the Fawn Knits podcast. And yeah, that thread closed. I announced winners in the last episode. So congrats to everybody who finished. So exciting. It was really great keeping up with all your progress. Um, so all your, whoever won, your prizes are being shipped out. And if not, you've already received them. Um, I forget exactly which prizes those were. So that's whatever. That, that's what I remember. Anyway, um, but, but yes, uh, the sweater is done. It's blocked. It's huge. <laughs> the sleeves are super long. They, they turn out longer than I expected them to be, which is totally cool because I actually love long sleeves. Um, there's nothing, I, there, I love nothing more than just to be able to pull the sleeves over my hands and just get cozy. Um, especially in the winter, if I don't have a pair of mittens with me, I just, if I'm wearing a sweater like this underneath my coat, I can just pull my sleeves down and boom, instant gloves. So yay. And I will say my finishing skills on the sweater could have been better, uh, but I will say it's not bad for my first uh, sweater or pullover uh, knit in pieces. Uh, this is stitched together. They're, they are seamed. Um, I think there were there were four different type four different pieces, uh, two sleeves, a front and a back, and I had to seam them together. Um, and the seams came out really well. I had to revisit some uh, mattress. Oh, I gotta fix that. <laughs> Uh, why didn't I see that? And that. What is that? What is that? Anyway, ventilation. <laughs> there you go. Artistic license, right? Um, but yeah, I had to revisit some mattress, uh, the mattress stitch, uh, just to seam those together and figure out how to seam the sleeves to the shoulders. Um, and had I been more educated before, I probably would have done a three needle bind off for the shoulder seams. Um, those were actually just bound off individually and then I had to figure out, uh, yeah, I, the front and back shoulder seams were um, bound off individually and I had to graft them together as well. But I think it would have been uh, a little bit neater, just my, sorry, cat, um, just for my skill set uh, to have just put the remaining stitches on some scrap yarn and then when it came to seaming them together, do a three needle bind off. Um, but otherwise it came together really well, I think. Um, and the other, the only modification that I did to this was the neck 
line. Uh, the pattern actually calls for a rolled neck where you just knit a couple rounds and then you bind off. So, you know, when you knit stock and it automatically just rolls up on itself. I really didn't like the way that was, um, the way that turned out. So I frogged back and I, instead of that, I did a, an I cord bind off, which I think looks very neat and polished. Uh, and yeah, it just turned out really, really well. I don't know if you can see that. Um, yeah, so I'm very, very happy with it. It's so warm, so cozy. This will be my go-to uh, pullover for the winter because it has just gotten really cold. Uh, this whole week it's been in like the 20s, you know, lower 30s. Um, last week it was 11 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, it, winter is here, my friends. <laughs> so this could not have been finished at a better time. Um, this will be my Vogue Knitting Live sweater. Uh, so if you are attending Vogue Knitting Live on Saturday, I will be there. I'm not taking any classes, um, but I will be meandering around the marketplace, um, doing some birthday damage, perhaps, <laughs> most likely. So if you see me, please do say hello. Uh, I give hugs, I'm, do not be shy. Just come up to me and say hi. Um, but yes, I will be there this Saturday, which I believe is the 16th, Saturday the 16th. Um, I'm not having an official podcaster meetup for Yarngasm, but Jenny from the Tiny Paper Foxes podcast and Eric from Six Plus String podcast, they are uh, hosting a podcaster meet, um, a, yes, a podcaster meetup after uh, at the Latitude Barn Grill, which is very close to... Um, to the Marriott Marquis where Vogue Knitting Live is happening. So at 5.30, I think it's 5, I believe it's 5.30. Yeah, we will all be meeting up there. So if you can make it, please make it. Um, I will post links to the event details, um, the meetup details in the show notes. And yeah, just RSVP, let us know that you're coming or them know that you're coming. Um, and yeah, that would be really awesome. So yay. <sighs> what else did I want to say about this pattern? I don't know, but... Um, I also had to learn how to <laughs> graft, uh, what is it, garter stitch together, which I thought turned out pretty neat. I think if I block this a little bit more, it'll flatten out and you won't really see that line, but it's virtually invisible if you stretch it out a little bit. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed this pattern. I have nothing bad to say about the way it was written. Um, you know, it's definitely an, an advanced pattern. Um, yeah, it's, it was definitely not a picnic, but I'm pretty much amazed at how quickly I was able to finish it, um, how dedicated I was to finishing it. So that's a win um, that, you know, I was, I was just determined to actually get a sweater knit for myself um, because I've pretty much been living in my Harpswell pullover for the past three years, uh, which is a pattern that I improvised. I don't have a pattern written up for it. I don't remember exactly what I did, but I just took the Elizabeth Zimmerman sweater recipe and ran away with it and added a couple of um, color work to it. So yeah, um, I'm happy to have a new one. And I actually took it for a test drive yesterday. I went to the grocery store, it was freezing out and this kept me so warm. I think the next thing I have to knit for myself are a pair of mittens. So yes, and as I mentioned, I was playing yarn chicken. <laughs> Quite a, yeah. Um, that's how much yarn, oh wait, no, 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 because of the, because I ripped out the rolled neckline, I actually ended up with a little bit more yarn left over. So, yeah, this is how much yarn I have left over. 11 skeins. I just made it. <laughs> so, yay. Awesome. Um, and I am going to try and whip up or so. I don't really have a sewing segment to talk about this week, but I am hoping to sew another ray skirt. Um, I mentioned to Jenny, I know she posted, Jenny from the Tiny Paper Foxes podcast, she posted a photo of her um, Vogue, Vogue Knitting Live ensemble and she loves sewing the ray skirt. Um, every time I see her, she's got a new ray skirt on with really cute fabric and everything. And I told her I may whip one up specifically for Vogue Knitting Live so we can be ray skirt twinsies, you know, so we have our make two. <laughs> I don't know. It counts as a make two. I'm not part of the, the actual, her um, make two along, craft along, um, knit along thing that she's hosting. But, you know, I, I'm kind of on the sidelines, I guess. I will call this my make two along um, project. So, yeah, hopefully I'll, I will have enough time this week. Um, so I'm sitting on my chair over here. So I'm getting comfortable, y'all. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, so I think that is about it. Uh, as far as what I wanted to say about 
this pattern. Um, hmm. I posted a lot of fun photos of it on Ravelry, so check it out if you're curious. Curious. Um, and the other thing that I have off my needles, yes, I have two objects off the needles this week. How exciting is that? That never happens, right? Um, I cast uh, uh, look, Danny from the Little Bobbins, uh, the Little Bobbins podcast. She every year, or she started uh, doing this last year, um, having a Christmas Eve cast on, uh, where everyone joins in on Christmas Eve and we just cast on a new project. Uh, it can be anything, just as long as you cast on Christmas Eve. And I, uh, Dennis and I were on our way to Italy on vacation. We were, I was on the plane and I cast on a pair of socks. And they're done, they're done. I'm so excited about these. Um, so these are my Christmas Eve cast on socks and I'm the the cuff, the heel, and the toe are knit out of Knit Picks uh, stroll in the dogwood. Uh, blah, blah. I can't talk today; it's ridiculous. Um, the dogwood heather uh, colorway, and then the main color, the self, this amazing self striping yarn, is out of Jinx yarn uh, Power Sock in her gingerbread colorway, um, which is a three. What is it? Yeah, it's a three stripe. Um, it's her, her Christmas one of her Christmas colorways, which unfortunately she's not going to be dying until the next holiday season, which yeah, is, is for a while from now, but I really, really enjoyed working with this. It just, self -stripe, there's something about self-striping yarn that just makes knitting socks a breeze. They These clearly just flew off my needles. Um, I know last week I showed you I was just barely <laughs> at the cuff. Uh, I barely just cast on the second cuff. Um, so, and they're not identical does not get, for some reason my OCD doesn't extend to stripes being symmetrical. I don't know why, but um, yeah, this is the first one that I cast on and this is the second one. I know because of where the stripes began, but um, yeah, so these are, these are, these are done. They're just a regular cuff down, uh, fish lips kiss heel, and rounded toe. So yeah, these were a lot of fun. Um, these will definitely be my holiday socks for next year, so I don't think I'm going to be wearing them until then so which is kind of sad because I really want to wear these I don't know I kind of have this uh dream of just knitting as many socks as I can kind of like Mina from the Knitting Expat podcast how she's doing a sockathon, but just collecting them in a little box so when every time I open this box it's just this beautiful vision of hand knit socks unworn I don't know I'm crazy but anyway um that's kind of Maybe, maybe that'll be my goal. Just knit a whole box of socks. I, I kind of toyed around with this idea last time or last year, I feel like, um, just knit a box of socks so they're ready to go for next year. So maybe that'll be something we do. We could start this box of socks knit along. It's just maybe a year long knitting project that we do. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that. Like the box of socks, Cal, like knit at least 12 pairs of socks by January 2017. Is that crazy? I don't know. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on that. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. But anyway, just a thought. So, and these are on my Bryson uh, sock blockers, the metal, which I really love. I blocked them last night using, um, goodness, what is it? Um, Tuft Woolens, her vanilla, her almond vanilla uh, soak wash, which I had as a sample. So it smells absolutely lovely. It's been a while since I've um, purchased some tuft woolens, but I really need to put another order in. Um, so yeah, that's something that's coming down the pipe. Uh, I, will, I might have to treat myself because it's birthday month. So yay. Awesome. All right. So that's off the needles. Um, I actually have enough yarn left over. I don't know. The, I probably have enough yarn to knit a pair of ankle socks. So maybe, just maybe, I will do that. And I definitely have enough yarn, contrasting yarn, um, to knit contrasting heels and toes again. So maybe I will do that. This way I can probably enjoy them this year. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Um, again, food for thought. Um, okay, so on my needles, you know, when you cast off a pair of socks or, you know, you finish knitting a pair of socks, you have to knit another pair. But since I already, I don't know what happened with this one, but I finished knitting, um, one sock for my, Ar my Regia Arne and Carlos, uh, summer night. So one sock is done. 
and I just have to knit the second sock. So that's where what I did last night. I cast on, and yeah, I'm, I'm at the same point as I was where I showed you last week. I was with uh, my Christmas Eve cast on socks. So who knows? I might be productive enough to have another sock done next week. So we'll see. Um, yes, so that's where we are in that. And <laughs> I'm using my DPNs, my Cubics. I am really enjoying these. I don't know why. This is very rare. Kristen is in rare form this week. I don't know why, but yeah. I am really enjoying my Cubics. These are size, US size 1.5, uh, 2.5 millimeter uh, DPNs, uh, five, I think they're five inches. Yeah. And these came with me on vacation. So I'm really like, I really like using these. Um, and I don't know why I just don't switch back to my carbons. I really do love knitting magic loop on my carbons. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm just going with it for this sock because I knit, um, this sock using these needles as well. So I think the next pair of socks, I'm going to switch back to my, um, my circulars. Oops, there we go. Um, back to my circulars because, yeah, I really do enjoy knitting Magic Loop more so than DPNs, but these are just resonating with me right now, and they're working out, and they're not bothering me, so I'm just gonna go with it. So, um, yeah, there have been a bunch of new-to-me podcasts that I've been watching that I keep meaning to mention on the show, but, uh, you know, I always think that I'm gonna find a way to work it into whatever I'm talking about, and for some reason I just don't. So, I'm just gonna Put a little mini segment here and talk about the podcast that I've been watching that I've been really, really enjoying. Um, and the first is uh, the Knitting Broomstick podcast, which I first heard about from Molly from A Homespun House. Um, she mentioned you have to check out this podcast. She's Jilly is great. She's you know fun and blah blah blah. So of course I had to check it out, and I love Jill. Jilly is awesome. She is so fun to watch. She's super excited about knitting and spinning, and it, it, she's just really entertaining. Um, and she just had a baby, so congrats, Jilly, if you're watching this. I had no idea that she was podcasting. I, re I recognized her name because she has placed several orders uh, for my yarn in the past, so I didn't really put two and two together. Um, she's also vegan Jilly on Ravelry as well. So then as soon as like I Molly told me about her, I'm like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. So that was really fun to find out. Um, but yeah, definitely give her, um, check out her podcast. Uh, it's just just subscribe. Don't don't even like watch an episode. Just subscribe. Um, you're you're gonna love it. So anyway, um, what else? I'm looking at my computer in the back because I have all my uh, notes from last week that I wanted to talk about. Um, I mentioned the uh, Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast with Jackie uh, last week, who who is awesome. She's I'm actually having dinner with her tonight. Ja I'm gonna talk about this in Blather, but yeah, there's gonna be a podcast through dinner tonight, which I'm super excited about. So. Um, but yeah, definitely check out the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast. Um, she's based in Brooklyn and just all around crafty and awesome and also very excited about a uh, project she's working on. Uh, she quilts, she, she's a graphic designer, and yeah, just check it out. Um, and who else? There's Once Upon a Corgi with, oh goodness, grr. This is going to kill me. Once Upon a Corgi. Uh, I met her at... I'm gonna put it in the down bar and I apologize. I'm totally blanking on your name right now, but she's the sister of Adrian from the Freakish Lemon podcast. Uh, so yeah, she has her own podcast now. She just got a wheel. It's, uh, she did a really cool video of her. Um, she got her wheel unfinished. So her and her brother, they just pulled apart everything and finished it with a stain and everything. And it was like a sped up kind of um, video, which was really fun to watch. So definitely give her a, a give her a uh, podcast a watch. Uh, she's got the most adorable corgis. I love corgis. If I had a dog, I would have a corgi because they are just so awesome. I could look at photos of corgis for hours. Yeah, they're just really cute dogs. But anyway, yeah. Uh, give Once Upon a Corgi a, a, a watch. <laughs> and uh, what else? There's uh, the Sticks and Twine podcast with Eric. He's in, he's from Canada. It's a I, I think I caught up with two of his episodes. Um, but yeah, really, really inspiring, um, and just the projects. It's, it's really, it's always great, uh, to see, you know, men who knit. It's refreshing. It really is. So I always love getting the other perspective of, uh, you know, from male knitters and, 
you know, it's, yeah, he's, he's a pleasure to watch as well. And I can't wait to meet him at Vogue Knitting Live. Um, so check out Sticks, and, Sticks Plus Twine. I think I called it Six and String in the, in, earlier in the episode. So, but yes, Sticks Plus Twine. Check it out. And then finally, um, was there another one? You know, there's one that I have to check out that I, I will probably talk about next week. But those are the ones that are first and foremost in my mind um, at the moment. So, yeah, I hope that gives you guys something, you know, if you, you are on the prowl for some new podcasts to watch, definitely give those a watch. They're, they're all video podcasts. Um, but there are definitely some other podcasts that I, audio podcasts that I want to check out. I know Woolful has been on my list for quite a while. Um, I heard, um, I listened to one, Michelle Wong was interviewed on an episode of Woolful and then, and then on Tiny Paper Foxes, they were talking about how they were listening to that. So that, that is probably going to be something that I listen to while I work. So no spinning this week. I have sadly been neglecting my wheel. I've been neglecting my um, drop spindles. Although, because it's my birthday month, I really want to treat myself to a new spindle like you do, but like a nice spindle. I want to get either a Jenkins, uh, which is, are known for their Turkish spindles, which you know I'm super obsessed with. Uh, I love Turkish spindles. Um, but then I've also been watching a Bosworth, I think either a Midi or a Moosey. I haven't decided yet, but the thing, I think I will be splurging on a Bosworth first, only because I'm kind of kicking myself. I saw a beautiful one at Rhinebeck, and I got, I may have gotten a little sticker shock when I saw the price tag on the one that I fell in love with, and I didn't, I wasn't mentally prepared to drop like $90 on a spindle at the time, but now I think because it's my birthday, I, I am prepared. I, I want to treat myself to a really nice, well-made um, <clears throat> spindle that will last me and spin beautifully because I've only heard great things and I've spun with uh, Michelle's from Gage Intention and it's amazing. Um, <clears throat> sorry, my throat's a little groggy today. Mm. So I went on their site and I actually have to spend, uh, their site is a little confusing, I will be honest. Uh, it's a lot of literature that you have to read through and their checkout process and ordering process. Um, so I think I have to just set aside a couple of, you know, uh, some time and go through the site and read exactly like what I have to do and like what's entailed in the ordering. Um, I was kind of hoping that they'd be vending at Vogue Knitting Live, but I didn't see them in the, the rundown for the vendor list. So I think, I'm, yeah, I think that'll be my plan. Um, next week I'll just sit down and order myself a Bosworth. Um, I'm kind of hoping for like an ebony or some dark wood. I don't know. I just... I don't even remember what the wood was called that I saw at Rhinebeck, um, but it was absolutely beautiful. It was like this dark charcoal gray and then like a dark gray shaft. It was so goth and me. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, more on that next time. Uh, we'll see if I actually order one. Um, so yeah, and Jenkins is really hard to catch an update. I know they update pretty fre frequently, but anytime that um, I go on the website, they've already sold out. So yeah, I might... When I get a Jenkins, I'll get a Jenkins, so no big deal. Um, okay, so as I mentioned, no sewing this week. I talked about that earlier, so I'm gonna talk about treat yourself. Um, no specific stash enhancements this week, but if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen that I have a new yarn fortress. <laughs> um, I was watching uh, Andre Sunitz, Andy. Um, Andre Sunitz is a podcast that you should also check out if you haven't watched it already. Andy, Andy is just wonderful she's adorable and so informative and the show is just so well produced i highly recommend it um but i was watching i think it was her last episode or no i think the episode before her first episode of the new year um she had totally revamped her stash found you know organized and everything out with the old in with the new and i was totally inspired so um i had been storing my uh my stash in an Ikea armoire. It was kind of like a linen closet with a glass. I will see if I can dig up a photo of it. Um, it's kind of, my office over there is kind of in a disarray right now, so I won't move the camera that way. <laughs> so um, I will try and insert a photo here. But yeah, it's this um, discontinued uh, Edland um, armoire. It has glass panels so you can see on the inside and it opens up. It's very vintage looking. Uh, it has a pull out drawer at the bottom and I've been using that as my stash uh, organizer uh, or I've been lovingly calling it my yarn fortress uh, which worked out great for many years but I just found it very you know I it didn't really organize my yarn the way I needed it to and you know just every time I was looking at 
looking for the right yarn, it just, I'd have to sift through a pile on a shelf. Um, and then the other shelves had baskets with whips and FOs and just, and my books were like on another shelf. It was just a mess. Um, and then I also had two of those, um, what is it? The Kallax. They, they used to be called the Expedits, but now they, um, reinvented it and call it, they now call it the Kallax. I believe it's more uh, efficient with the use of wood, uh, the amount of wood that they use in it, which is fine. Um, but I had one of those, one was an early, uh, Expedit. And then I had another one, which Dennis found on the street while we were moving, uh, which is from their Kallax collection. So basically more or less two of the same smaller, um, cubby hole units. It, if you're familiar, I will try and insert a photo of it too. Um, but yeah, they were like the smaller basic, uh, cubby hole shelves that you're all familiar with, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, one was from the previous version and then one was from the new version. And I was like, okay, well maybe I could stack them up on top of each other just to create this one wall unit. No, it just, they didn't align correctly and it was just off and probably dangerous to like stack them that way. So I decided, all right, we're just gonna, I, I don't want my yarn and, you know, my supplies and my yarn in two different places. So I just want to combine everything into one fell swoop, if you will. So, uh, last weekend, Dennis and I went to Ikea and we purchased the big Kallax. Um, and I'm going to try and turn my camera so you can see it. Um, so here it is. And I'll try and tilt it down so you can see it. Um, so yeah, right there. Are, is where I keep all my blank yarn, my undyed yarn that I dye for my shop. And then, you know, it's still a work in progress, but up here, I will try and post another video so you can see more clearly. But um, over here we have all my sock yarn. Over here we have more, um, well, this is like the run of the, um, commercial sock yarn. You have knit picks and then you have, um, maybe I'll, I will just take you on a tour right now. Um, okay. <laughs> so, okay, right here, as I mentioned, we have like knit picks, we have regia and some miscellaneous, you know, store-bought uh, yarns. And then here I have my jar of drop spindles, but behind it I have sock yarn, like so yarn that I know that I'm definitely going to be knitting socks with. Um, and then here is my goodness, Snyder spindle with the narwhals. And then here is kind of like a mishmash. I haven't really decided what I'm going, what this all is exactly, but um, this is mostly hand spun worsted weight. Here's some lace weight, my yarn from Italy, from Lila Bella. And then here is like where the main hub is. <laughs> this is all like, this is all fingering weight. Um, I haven't really, mainly they're going to be shawls or, um, I don't know, garments. I haven't really decided what I'm going to be doing with them, but I know <clears throat> for the most part, they're not going to be socks, except into the world. That might be a pair of socks. Why is that there? I have no idea. Um, and over here is my rabbit with little knickknacks in it. Um, and then this is just a basket that I got from, my mother-in-law actually got this basket for me at Rhinebeck. And it's just a basket full of leftover yarns or caked up yarns that I have no idea what I'm doing with quite yet. And then up here, Nina, you'll appreciate this one. Uh, <laughs> Nina from, uh, I, after I posted a photo of uh, my Yarn Fortress version 2.0 on Instagram, uh, Nina from the This Old Knit podcast uh, asked if she could live in, in this cubby right here, which I now lovingly call the loop suite <laughs> because it has all my loop bats in it, um, my loop bullseye bumps, um, and some other fancy schmancy uh, fiber in there. So yes, Nina, you can certainly live in here. Um, come over any time. Um, and here are some braids. These are mainly braids that I have, bra uh, fiber braids. And yeah. And then over here, <laughs> here's the, um, my Bluetooth stereo, which is awesome. Highly recommend it. I got it off Amazon for 30 bucks and the sound is amazing. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm goofy. Uh, but yeah, all, this is where I have my Rolex and my little tiny, um, fibery tribbles and you know, the like. So, and over here we have my books, my knitting books. Uh, we have a unicorn hanging out with a dinosaur because why not? Uh, I have my stitch dictionaries and over here we have, I believe these, yeah, these are from Rhinebeck too. Also from my, my parents-in-law. They always get us pumpkins every year. Um, and Cinderella. 
I think that's from my grandmother's house. I rescued it. So yeah, now it's living here and it just makes sense that Cinderella is standing between two pumpkins. Um, like she does. But anyway, um, yeah, just a mishmash more of like sewing books, knitting books, and then do not ask me why I, ha I have two copies of Bust. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's that. And then I'm trying to see what's happening down here. Yeah, just inventory books and photo books and my bobbins uh, that are living in a basket. Um, just some storage stuff. And then we have the incense cubby hole with fancy vases and candles. Um, yeah, I have really no idea what's going on here. Um, I'm still decorating. And then here we have the AV department <laughs> with my camera and lenses. This is probably not the most, the best way to store my lenses. Um, I know this is like an old one that is probably seen its day. It's like a hand-me-down years ago from my mom. So I don't know, that one lost its case a while ago. Um, and yeah, and here's my sheep photo from East Witching. Um, goodness, I can't, East Witching. She has an Etsy shop, I highly recommend her. She does really beautiful animal watercolors. So yeah, please do check her shop out. I will post a link in the show notes. Um, I have another print by her, um, which I'll show another time. And then here, which one was it? Oh, yeah, this is this box right here. I don't know if I'm pointing that down right. Um, is my designated, mini skein drawer <laughs> and my cozy memories blanket is living in there which I hope to pick up very soon um, but yeah just all the mini skeins are in here um, which is awesome so I hope you found that entertaining uh, yeah so let me go back to my setup um, but yeah anyway <laughs> it's it's definitely a work in progress I'm having a lot of fun decorating um, but it made all the difference. I definitely have a lot more room to spread out in my office. Uh, I love having everything in one place and it's perfect. I could probably use another one, but I won't, I won't do that. Putting it together was a beast. Uh, it's, <laughs> I always considered it calling it the beast, but I, I figure Yarn Fortress version 2.0 is, works out very well. So, um, yeah, and it's, I found it really funny how I went, after I posted it on Instagram, everyone thought that it was a yarn shop, and no, but I'm excited that it looks like a yarn shop now, so yay, awesome. <laughs> oh, goodness, all right. Um, but other than that, no uh, stash enhancements this week. Um, next week, check back with me because Vogue Knitting Live will happen. <laughs> so, okay, I am gonna move on to Ask Away. Um, Ask, yeah, because we do have a couple of questions from Ask Away. Um, so we'll, uh, which basically is, if you have a question for me, uh, any question at all regarding uh, the podcast, knitting, dyeing, my life in general, within reason, um, feel free to drop me a line in the Ask Away thread, and I will do my best to answer it every week. Sometimes I will just go right into the thread and answer it right there if it makes sense to, or if I, ha you know, if I don't have the time to answer it on the show. Um, but yeah, let me know. Uh, Feel free to ask me anything uh, there. Wolfona on Ravelry asks, Hello, Kristen. Uh, I love your colorways. I wanted to ask how many colors of dyes do you regularly use? <laughs> wow, regularly is a really hard word to say. It's a tongue twister, I think. Um, okay, how many color colors of dyes do you regularly use? Do you have only a couple of colors uh, and you mix them a lot to get what you want? Or do you have a lot of colors and then use them as they are? For example, do you have a green dye or do you mix yellow and blue for that? Um, what about purples, etc.? Thanks. Okay, I think what she means is do I take the primary colors and mix primary colors like red, yellow, and blue to get more advanced colors? Uh, or do I buy them uh, as they are, like already pre-mixed, um, like magenta or blue-green or aqua or yellow green or something like that and then use them as you know powders as they are um i do a little bit of both uh mainly i buy the colors as they are um i buy i purchase my dye from dharma dye works um or dharma trading.com they have like a whole array of dyes uh, acid dyes that you can choose from and i really love having fun picking like all the different colors that they have to offer and playing around with them experimenting um, so mainly I do that, uh, and then sometimes I will mix those together to create even new color colorways, you know, if that makes any sense. Um, I think only if I'm trying to get a specific red or a specific type of blue, uh, I will just 
revert back to the primaries and go from there. Like if I'm trying to get a specific purple with more red or a specific purple with more blue, I will then um, use the primary dyes. So I hope that answers your question. Um, but yeah, I just really love having fun with all the different crazy colors because it makes my heart sing. What can I say? Um, and then, what is it? Uh, Crafty Lynette. I think it got chopped off. <laughs> um, Crafty Lynette R. on Ravelry asks, Hi, Kristen. I'm a new knitter. So my question is, what piece of advice would you give to a new knitter? Thanks for the great podcast. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. Um, okay, so advice for new knitters. I would say the main, the key advice I would say is don't be afraid to, you know, dive right in. Um, try new techniques. It's only, I think it was Maria from the Stitch in Sweden podcast said, it's only hard, you know, techniques are only hard until you learn how to do them. Um, be patient with yourself. Um, but yeah, just don't be afraid to just jump into learning lace uh, or learning a special increase technique. Um, there are so many ways to increase, uh, you know, a, a raglan sweater. Uh, one might be, be one might be more aesthetically pleasing, but you only know how to do, um, you know, knit through the back loop or method or technique or make one. Um, it's just all a matter of just being patient. Wrap your brain around, you know, the entire concept and just go for it um and yeah it you know you may like something you may not like something that that'll just develop your personality as a knitter um you know not all knitters are the same uh we all like different things and you know but yeah just when you're learning open your mind do not be afraid you know mistakes are okay you can always fix your mistakes that's the main thing um and yeah, definitely, you know, I would also say don't limit yourself to one type of yarn. Um, you know, a lot of beginners start out with acrylic, which is totally cool, perfect way to learn. Um, but yeah, don't, you know, feel like, oh, I have to be an advanced knitter to try hand-dyed yarn, or I have to be an advanced knitter to try non-super wash wool, if that makes any sense. But, you know, just follow your knitting heart, if that makes any sense. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, and... I'm trying to think if there's anything else um, as far as, you know, tools, you know, yeah, I mean, just, you know, don't feel like you have to invest all your money in, you know, a specific brand. Try different brands. If you have a friend that has a, a needle set that you're curious about, borrow it. Ask them if you could, you know, borrow it for a weekend or whatever and play around with it. Um, and you know, or just buy things piecemeal, you know, just, ooh, that looks interesting. Let me purchase that and try it and then see if you like it. And then, then spring for, you know, the whole set of chow goos or car buns or whatever your heart fancies. So I hope that helps. Um, and yeah, again, if you have a question, just leave, leave that for me in, in the ask away thread. Um, yeah. Okay. So <sighs> that was a lot of talking. Um, I'm going to move on to shop update because I will be having a shop update, uh, tomorrow, uh, December, no, why do I keep saying, I, for some reason I keep saying it's December, it's January, uh, January 15th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so by the way, I just want to say thank you to everybody who uh, purchased yarn for me last week. It was a really great update, a uh, great way to kick off the new year. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. And yes, the new update time seems to be working well, really, really well. A lot of you were really appreciative of that. So I'm glad it's working. Um, and yes, as I mentioned, I will be having once a month, uh, the last Saturday of every month, I will be having an international friendly update, uh, starting at every Saturday at 10 AM Eastern standard time. So I hope that works out for you guys living across the pond and other places. <laughs> um, a lot of you sounded very excited about that. So yay. And the other awesome news that I have is, uh, in regards to cart jacking, which is where the, the problem in the past was people had been adding things to their cart, but some people were quicker to check out. So whatever you added to your cart wouldn't, wouldn't be able to be reserved there. It would, you know, if someone was quicker to check out, it would be gone. And that was, I could see how frustrating and annoying that was. So I really <laughs> looked into, uh, kind of, you know, trying to remedy that a little bit. Um, so now, uh, I found a plugin for my site. Um, anybody who adds anything um, in the shop uh, to your cart, that item will stay in your cart for at least five minutes. Uh, so you have time to either browse or check out, giving everybody a fair chance to check out and get away, you know, and come away with what they had wanted. Um, 
So I hope that helps. Uh, after five minutes are up, uh, whatever you've placed in your cart, and if you still haven't checked out, that it will auto, it will automatically go back into the shop for someone else to swipe it up. So I hope that helps. I hope that goes over well. It went over really well last week. I don't think I officially announced it. Um, but yeah, you might see uh, if you are, if you do miss, if someone has it in your cart and you're on the listing site, it may say someone else already has this in their cart, please come back in three minutes. I know that might be a little bit annoying, but I'm gonna try it out a little bit, see how it works. Fingers crossed, it's a plan that works out well. Um, yes, so yay. Okay, um, I have, I'm gonna show you some colorways that are gonna be in the shop this week or tomorrow. <laughs> um, so I'm very excited about my Valentine's Day colorways. I have, um, as I mentioned, I was inspired to do a goth Valentine's Day, uh, a goth themed Valentine's Day uh, collection. And I have two colorways so far that I dyed up this week. I'm not sure if I'm going to be dying up anymore, but I have um, Jilted Rose, which I came up with last year. Let me see. I have a big bin right here. I'll just show it to you. Um, I will have Jilted Rose, which is a regular colorway, but it's very Valentine's gothy, I think, the name especially. Um, so that will be in the shop. And then a new colorway that I dyed up um, is my Bloody Valentine. So it's this kind of, you know, I want to say like muted magenta almost. And this is on my, Gats uh, my Gatsby base. And then I will also have it on Smitten DK. And then I will also have it on Narwhal. I will, ha I will dye all these across the board. So um, they'll be on dyed up on various bases. Um, so yeah, this is my Bloody Valentine. And then another colorway that I'm super excited about that I dyed this up last night and I was like, I have to keep one for myself because it's awesome. Um, I think I'm going to be calling it Love Song after the Cure, you know, the song by the Cure, uh, Love Song. Um, but yeah, it's just purples and reds and pinks and lavenders, uh, just muted and grays. It's, I really, really love it. It's going to be really hard <laughs> for me to part with, I don't know, I can't decide if I want to keep this one, which is on my Blitz base and this is on my Narwhal base. Um, but yeah, I just really love the way this turned out. Um, and then I think I'm going to be dying. I have Gouge Away, which is after a pixie song. So yeah, lots of blue, purplish blues, uh, peaches, mauve, you know, grays, not surprising there. Um, so I will have this on Smitten DK and then I think I have it, I think it's only on Smitten DK this week. Oh no, no, no. And I have it on Volca. Um, yeah. And then of course I have to have Gashly Crumb. So that will be dyed on several bases. Um, I will have Outlander. This is on Gatsby. Sorry, I had a pause there. I, I sneezed, had a sneezing fit. Um, but yes, I will have Outlander on Gatsby. I will have it on, do I have it on anything else? I think I have it on Volca. I'm not sure, I have to double check, but um, there will be that. And then, this is a new colorway that I dyed up last week and I fell in love with it. Um, so this is a new regular. This is Venus Fly. It's my it's my green. Uh, I know for a while I've been trying to come up with my version of green and this is it. And I know many of you have been asking me for a green colorway. Um, I have Wicked, which I dye up occasionally, mainly for Halloween, but it definitely doesn't speak to me as much as this green does. So I saved myself the skein and I'm gonna be knitting a shawl with it. I don't know what yet, but it will be something. Um, and then, because uh, if you've been following the news, uh, David Bowie has passed away, which is incredibly sad. Uh, really, really, really sad news. Um, and it only make, made sense for me to dye up, you know, a colorway dedicated or inspired by David Bowie, because who isn't inspired by David Bowie? Um, so yeah, I came up with a colorway. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it a regular, but I think... I'm not incredibly happy with it per se uh, for enough to be a regular. Uh, it kind of reminds me of um, Outlander a little bit. So I think the next time I dye this up, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to dye it up the way I dye Octopus Gar my Octopus Garden colorway where it's variegated um, and not speckled because this kind of reminds me of Outlander a little too much, but I'm gonna call it Life on Mars <laughs> because it definitely, the colors definitely look like his, um, 
like he does in the video, if you're not familiar with it. I will try and post a, um, a video uh, or a link to the video in the show notes. But yeah, I, I couldn't resist um, because yeah, David Bowie, man. I mean, uh, anyway. Uh, so I think that is it for, I'm going to be dying up some more yarn later on today. Um, so we'll see what else I come up with, but that's mainly what's going to be in the shop. So that said, I hope you guys can make the shop update tomorrow. Again, it's, uh, tomorrow, Friday, uh, January 15th at 7 PM Eastern standard time. Um, and yeah, Valentine's day colorways are in. Yay. Um, okay. So I'm going to move on to blather. Um, so if you're not interested, See you next week. Happy knitting. Um, but yeah, today, uh, later on, I will be meeting up with uh, Mina from the Knitting Expat podcast. I will be meeting up with Jenny from the Tiny Paper Foxes podcast. And I will be meeting up with Jackie from the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast. We're going out to dinner. Mina's in town. She, As you know, she's based in Bahrain, but occasionally she comes to the city because uh, her husband is um, studying here. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be super fun. I cannot wait. Um, just a little pre-gaming, I guess, before Vogue Knitting Live this weekend. And, you know, just a, a chance to hang out. Um, so I can't wait for that. And what else? Aside from that, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, I know. <laughs> New Year's resolutions. I know I, last week I didn't really get around to um, talking about them because I was just doing a whole recap of my vacation, uh, which by the way, thank you to everybody who commented. Uh, I'm so glad that you enjoyed hearing my recap of, you know, my vacation in Italy and you enjoyed the photos and yeah, it was just an all around blast. Um, I've, I've since recovered. I'm over my cold. <laughs> I had my massage. I am a new woman. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that was really nice to just have that week and take my, take it easy, relax a little bit and just, you know, get over the jet lag, which was just, yeah, I finally feel like I'm in a normal, what do you call it? I'm on a normal schedule where everything, you know, I'm not jet lagged anymore. But anyway, um, so yeah, yeah, exciting. Um, but yes, okay, what else did I want to talk about? New Year's resolutions. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you with any, you know, the personal stuff, but as far as, you know, generally I don't really set New Year's resolutions for myself, but as far as knitting, I feel like this year I'm going to try and, you know, I don't know, we'll see where I get. Just some things that I want to have in the back of my mind, you know, or just have in mind this year, or some themes, I guess. Um, but I guess I'll cover the knitting, since this is a knitting podcast, I will cover the knitting resolutions that I've come up for myself. Um, so the first one is to finish my Vera Deer shawl, <laughs> which has been on the needles way too long. I think I have a thing with, it's not the pattern. The pattern is wonderful, um, and it's a pleasure to knit, but I think I definitely have a thing with applied borders. For some reason, anytime I attempt to knit one, it just takes me forever. So that is going to get done this month. I will have my Vera, my Vera Deer shawl finished. It's a lovely pattern by uh, Isabel from the Fluffy Fibers podcast. So definitely check it out. I'm knitting it. I don't, it's in my stash, in my project bag over there, but it, I'm knitting it out of my Volenvine Yarns uh, Blitz Base in the Seculent colorway. So yes, that will be off the needles this month. That's, I'm holding myself to that. Um, and also my Lumpy Space Shawl. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish that this week, but, or this month, uh, but it's definitely on the list of shawls that I want to finish. So that's one resolution. <laughs> um, the other one is to knit larger garments. Uh, mainly I feel like this past year I've just been knitting a lot of socks. Um, so this year I, I really want to focus on knitting larger things like shawls and sweaters. So I definitely want to knit Dennis a sweater. It's been much too long. I've been putting that on the back burner for way too long, as I just said. Um, so he's going to get a sweater this year. He will. I will, I will make sure of it that I think maybe that is the next sweater that I knit. I'm just, you know, going to knit him a sweater. I haven't decided what pattern yet, but the last one I kind of lost steam on. I, I think it was the Ranger, um, cardigan by Jared Flood. And I wasn't, I don't know, I lost steam on it and the pattern itself. I just really wasn't pleased with the way it was knitting up. Um, so yeah, new pattern, new, new sweater for Dennis. Um, I'm going to try and knit two sweaters for myself. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I don't know which patterns in specifically, but, uh, two, two sweaters for myself. Um, and then another goal that I have is to design a pattern, design a new pattern. Um, I have a couple out. I have a hat, I have a shawl, 
I have some free sweater patterns out there, but this um, this year I definitely want to design a new shawl pattern. Um, so that will be coming down the pike, hopefully. Um, it's just a matter of me setting some time for myself, designated design time. Um, because yeah, that'd be really cool um, to have another pattern under my belt. Um, and then I definitely want to keep a knitting journal. I saw a lot of you guys, uh, pot, a lot of podcasters are starting to get, keep knitting journals uh, where they save some leftover yarn and the tag and write little notes about the project that they were using the yarn for. Um, so I definitely want to do that. Uh, if any of you actually have any suggestions for types of journals for that, like journals that would be great for doing that, um, let me know because I'm kind of on the prowl for one. I'm kind of thinking like a spiral bound uh, journal that doesn't have any lines on it or maybe just graph paper. Um, but yeah, give, let me know your recommendations because I am in the mark. I'm, you know, currently on the prowl for uh, a knitting journal. Um, yeah, so. And, or if you're already keeping a knitting journal, let me know how you're keeping, you know, what you, how you utilize that. I'd be really curious to know. Um, so that's pretty much it as far as my knitting goals and resolutions for this year are concerned. Um, yeah, I think maybe improve my spinning a little bit. I don't know. I, this is so, um, like I'm not holding myself to anything. It's just kind of what I'd like to do, <laughs> if you will. Um, especially when I, you know, I guess I, I, I will go into what my personal uh, resolutions are, but you know, there, there are things that I would like to accomplish, th things that I should accomplish, but you know, we'll see if I actually get around to doing them. So first of all, I want to get my driver's license. This is some, I'm, I don't, how old am I going to be? I think I'm going to be 33. I was born in 1983. So yeah, I think it's time for me to get my driver's license. Again, I live in the city and we're totally spoiled by mass transit, by taxis, by subway, by bus. There was no reason for me growing up to get a driver's license until I started dating Dennis. You know, he was, you know, he had a car and we were always doing road trips. And I think he would like me occasionally to just get behind the wheel and drive for him. Because, <laughs> you know, we go up to Cape Cod. It's about like a th four or five hour drive, depending on traffic, and it'd be nice. I'm sure he would he would appreciate me switching on and off with him um, because it is a long drive, and I would love to do that. But at the same time, I'm just kind of like, but then that kind of takes away from my knitting time because I I just enjoy sitting in the passenger seat knitting away. It's it's a lot of knitting time, you guys. So that's another thing that I'm just not too psyched about. <laughs> but I I really should get my driver's license. Um, so yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll do that this year. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, the other thing that I'm thinking about is um, once a month being very proactive about, I take a lot of pho photos on my iPhone. So I'm thinking about being very proactive about maybe once a month, just going through my iPhone, uh, unloading all the photos and actually making physical tang tangible copies or prints of said photos and putting them in an album because right now they just live on my iPhone. Um, and yeah, I definitely still have to get around to printing out or putting it, as I mentioned last week, uh, putting our trip to Italy in a, in a book. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to be on top of that this year. Um, cause it's, it, it just gets crazy. Um, keeping track of all those photos. Um, and yeah, learning German, I kind of let that fall to the wayside these past couple of months. Uh, but yeah, I want, definitely want to hop back on that bandwagon and improve my German, uh, learn to speak it more uh, fluently or, you know, become more proficient in speaking German because it's such a fun language. Um, I really enjoy it. It just sounds lovely. It's, you know, where my mother's side of the family comes from, my grandmother and everything. It just, you know, it's always been something I've wanted to do and learn and yeah, it would just be great to speak it. And I'm definitely going to pick that up again. Um, watching podcasts and, you know, spoken t TV shows <clears throat> spoken in German. Um, so that'll be fun. And then I know, uh, Danny from the little bobbins knits podcast was talking about, uh, a word for the year or some, several, uh, podcasters have been talking about like a specific word that they designate, you know, just to have in the forefront of their mind for 2016. Um, and then uh, the Knit More Girls always do a theme, uh, like their theme for the new year. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of like come up with my own and see, you know, how it goes with that. Um, so I think, you know, the theme is for me this year will be to keep it simple um, because I have a tendency to overanalyze, overthink and overdo things sometimes. So I think it's probably good for me to practice to just, you know, whittle it down <laughs> and, you know, just take one thing at a time and 
go from there. All right, I think that's it. So um, yeah, I mean, if you feel like sharing your uh, New Year's resolutions or you know your word or theme or something that you, you are um, thinking about doing more or less of in 2016, I'd be happy to hear about it. Um, I'm interested always, as always, so post in the uh, Yarn Gas and Ravelry thread. Um, and yeah, I, I'll be looking forward to reading those. Um, and yes, I do, I do want to mention that I, there are some new people who've introduced themselves in the Ravelry thread, in the Ravelry group. So hello, big hello to you guys. I know I'm, I have to get around to responding to all of your, uh, posts. Um, but I do read all of them. So, and it's always, as always, I always say this, it's wonderful hearing from viewers. Um, and yeah, and it's. I'm, you know, I've been podcasting for I don't know how many years now, but it's I'm just amazed amazed by how much the Yarngasm community and group has grown. So yay, awesome. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for this week. Um, and again, if you are heading to Vogue Knitting Live this Saturday, please do say hello. Um, I would love to meet you. I will have no swag. I'm sorry, there weren't enough hours in the day uh, to make mini skeins. Um, I, I I may have some buttons. Um, so I'll see if I can bring those. Um, but otherwise there will be no, no swag, no official yarn gas and meetup. I'm sorry, but please do say hello to me. Grab me, say hello, <laughs> hug me. I, I will hug back. Um, yes. So anyway, that said, happy knitting and I will see you next time. Bye.